We've got time for one last question. That's um, just here in the front. Hello, I'm Lucy Hopgood Brown, and I work with uh, in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And I've been getting appeals every day from Congolese healthcare workers in the very area where Ebola has struck, asking if there's any way that Australia or the United States can do anything to redirect some of the aid and people power towards the Ebola crisis there. It's been quite a challenge to do that, and I wondered if you had any suggestions on how we might alert people that the Ebola crisis is not just in West Africa. Yeah, I, I, I think um, uh, you should keep saying it. You should keep saying it every day. I mean, you know, I, so uh, right now we don't have an agreed to consensus on what the clinical intervention will be. So MSF has done an incredibly heroic job. And, and they have gotten their um, uh, death rates down as low as 20%. But their intervention, they, they, they do exactly one laboratory test, which is the Ebola ELISA, and they do really re one intervention, which is oral, oral rehydration. So for example, if you're in an uh, MSF clinic and you're vomiting, right, it's very hard to take oral rehydration. And so if you added to the, to the fantastically effective and heroic MSF response, if you added IV hydration, management of electrolytes, uh, blood draws that would you know, uh, follow any number of studies, if you could do that, then we think you could get the, um, uh, the survival rates up very high. And what you need to do then is to have WHO say, this is the clinical response. So in every hospital, this is what's going to happen. In the rural areas, you, sh you start with this and this, but quickly move to get everything else in place. Once, once they have that, and th those of you are, are a lot of health people here, uh, you, you know, tuberculosis therapy was completely random, and every doctor treated TB differently until we had dots. So we need a kind of dots for Ebola. And once that's in place, then we need to get it in place in all the countries in, in the surrounding areas. Uh, I worry a lot about DRC, uh, because once you are in DRC, and if it starts spreading, and if there's no access to good care, then you know, anyone with a fever uh, the smart thing to do is to run away from authority and go somewhere else where you think you might get care. So if, if DRC gets involved and if there's an outbreak in DRC, then all of a sudden East Africa is involved. Right? So we have to move. And, and, and I, I, I guarantee you people are thinking hard about what's, what's happening in those countries. But the first step is to convince the world that we have an approach that is up to the task clinically, that we can prevent the infections, that everyone agrees that this is the inv intervention, WHO puts their stamp of approval on it, and then we go. And I think at that point, we have to make sure that every single country in the region uh, has access to that level and that quality of service.